All right, another week here of the Viking Podcast. I'm Will Turbot. That's Robert Gonson. We've got a very, very special episode here for you today. Two interviews, one with Caleb Coger and one with Jalen Gilbo. Texas commit Jalen Gilbo. That's where Robert's going. But let's go ahead and get things kicked off here with baseball. Robert, there were quite a few upsets this week, weren't there? Yeah, I know. The four seeds, uh, they all, the four seeds like Woodlands, Pearland, Stratford, Summer Creek. Uh, the other teams there, Plano and VR yeah, Eaton. VR Eaton. So quite a few four seeds, and that's just in 6A. We're not even talking about uh, 1A through 5A right now. But I believe that's six uh, well, in the six three. A. Yeah, that's really crazy. Uh, so some districts kind of dominated in this one, and Robert, a district that we cover a lot in District Twenty Three, they went undefeated against District Twenty Four, including Paraland's win. Uh, so it seems like we're going to have a little bit of dominance. We said that was one of the districts uh, that looked really strong going into the playoffs. Alvin going to be one of the state favorites, I believe. Uh, Shrek Jesuit will be taking on Dickinson, Shadow Creek in there too. Robert, what have you seen from these teams this year? Shrek Jesuit, let's just focus right now real quickly. Garrett Stratton is the man. Lights out. For those who don't know, he's a junior pitcher committed to Rice University. They've got a legendary program down there. In game one against Dickinson on his home field, nine strikeouts, only three walks. Yeah, he is an absolute beast. I'm sure he'll be pitching game one in the series uh, coming up right here against the Tassacita. That's who they're playing next round. Beat Dickinson in two games as a three seed. Uh, but there's a lot of matchups to look up forward to here as this uh, second round, the series will start. Lake Travis and Churchill, two teams that we talked a whole lot about this year, uh, you know, starting to, to – mix with the Austin and San Antonio teams already this early on Lake Travis the pitching has been insane for them this year uh, I think there'll be a team we'll see very late on probably in June the way things are going right now and we yeah obviously we can't forget down right here in Houston Summer Creek Shadow Creek Battle of the Creeks yeah sh- the Summer Creek has kind of come out of nowhere as this amazing uh, athletic program Robert you're going to talk a little bit later on I believe they had a great weekend at state uh, track meet last week. So we'll, we'll, we're looking forward to that. Monwood and South Lake Carroll. South Lake Carroll came into the season as one of the teams to look out for to win a championship this year. Uh, so Monwood was a district winner. I'm sure that'll be a great game over there in the DFW area. Bridgeland, who we know best by Connor Weigman, will be taking on College Park, another district winner there. And then Reagan and Cedar Ridge. This is a really interesting matchup, Robert. Westlake, Westlake, Cedar Ridge. I'm talking about Cedar Ridge and this Reagan matchup coming up. A little bit of a, I mean, Cedar Ridge. Westlake's this, like, all credit to them. They're a great school. Yeah, they kind of had a powerhouse going in all, all three sports. They were supposed to be really good. I mean, they were a really good baseball team. They had high hopes. They're really good in basketball. Great in football. What happened? Yeah, losing in three games, uh, it's going to look bad on paper, but Cedar Ridge is such a great team. The talent is just loaded in there in Austin, like we've said in the last few weeks. So baseball getting really exciting right now, coming up in the last few weeks, getting closer to a state championship. I think we'll make our predictions next week as we start to narrow down the field. Yeah, definitely keeping – Keep in mind, keep your eyes open for some great matchups this weekend. I know that Will and I possibly may be covering the Strake Jesuit uh, Patasca seated game one, possibly Thursday night. Keep your eyes peeled for that. We, we, we're we looking forward to the game nonetheless. But, yeah, overall, some great matchups are going to be happening soon. Yeah, make sure to check out our pages on Vibe.com. We'll always include a link to the broadcast there. As for now, we're going to kick it over to our interviews with Caleb Coger and with Texas commit Jalen Gilbo. All right, and from the class of 2023, we are here with Katie QB, Caleb Coger. Caleb, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm, I'm good. How are y'all? Doing well. Great. Yeah, we're excited to have you on, man. You had an amazing season, about as, about as good as it can get. One loss and then a, a state championship 
this is a pretty broad question, but what was the whole experience like from the start of last season uh, to the win in AT&T Stadium? It was crazy, and it was like a roller coaster. So many ups and downs. Uh, I didn't start the first game. My first start was the second game of our season against Cy Woods. I did all right, but like just going from there and then losing the Tompkins was a big like wake up call for me and for our whole team actually. And and then we we used that as motivation to help us continue to win and just get to the state championship and win it. Well, talk about like not starting in the first game and then taking that role uh, from the second game completely to the the state championship. Was it kind of a quick adjustment that you like a big but quick adjustment that you had to get really get used to, or had had you been prepared basically to take upon that role? Um, actually, my dad had told me that that summer, prepare like you're the starter on varsity. I was thinking, there's no way. I, I was just I was just going to be a JV quarterback. And then it just happened that I was going to be the starter. And that first game, he, uh, my quarterback coach, Coach Rich, he told me that I'm I'm going to be the second string, and we're going to I'm going to share time. And then that game, I went like three for five passing against Clear Springs. It uh, it was a lot of running that game, but yeah, it was just a big wake up call for me. And then and then Cywoods was my first start. I got to throw the ball more. I threw my first touchdown that game. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Growing up, you know, in that area, it, there's nothing really bigger uh, than Katie football. Had you kind of, I know you said your dad told you to prepare in those last couple months leading up to the season to be the starter for varsity. Is that something you've been preparing for for your whole life pretty much? Yeah. I've been a quarterback since I was in like second grade. That's when I first started. And I've always wanted to be a quarterback. Well, I mean, you really, you really caught on quick, quickly because I, I covered two of your playoff games, the one against Clear Falls and then the one against uh, – first one was actually against Shadow Creek and the one against Clear Falls. And on our, after those two games on our podcast after that where we were talking about like covering the later rounds, I would tell Will and, uh, and uh, Tinley, who's our other co-host who's on here sometimes, that Caleb Coger, he reminds me of Patrick Mahomes. He's like a gunslinger in the way he can really just throw the ball downfield. When I saw you throw those two long bombs against Shadow Creek, I was just thinking, this is a kid to watch out for. Thank you. Is, is, Mahomes, is Mahomes someone that you really like kind of envisioned? Or is there, a, is there a specific quarterback or college player or NFL uh, guy you really look up to? Uh. I'm more of a Peyton Manning guy. I love Peyton Manning. He's he's my favorite quarterback and probably favorite football player ever. I feel like he was just so good throwing the ball and leading his leading the Broncos and first the Colts, obviously. But yeah, and the way he he ended his career with the Super Bowl, I I thought it was like perfect storyline career. Hey, I was always a Peyton Manning fan too, and uh, you can never go wrong with that. Yeah. So so that being said. Uh, we see a lot of quarterbacks trying to take, you know, one little thing from each of their favorite players and kind of integrate that uh, into their motion, you know, into their complete game. Uh, who are some other guys that, that you've looked up to and, and maybe like their form or the way they lead or, you know, just various things like that? Uh, I also like Aaron Rodgers. I think he is just so good at throwing the ball. He, he can fit it anywhere you need. It's he's just so talented and obviously he's a leader, but right now he's having a little troubles with his <laughs> guy. But yeah, I've always well, speaking about like current times now, you're gonna be a junior next year, and you know, Tompkins they were really on the rise this year, they were your only loss, and people were kind of calling them the new red of Katie. But now that some like star player Jalen Milrow he's gone, what are you gonna do? And how are you going to take back that red of KD and just sit back on that throne? Oh, we're going to beat them. I, we're not letting another loss happen. Everyone on our team, we've like that, like our new goal, we, we want a state championship. Now we want the district championship. We want to beat Tompkins. Everybody, everybody in our locker room, like sometimes we'll just talk about how bad we want to beat them. 
And like that's that's our that's our game next year. Uh, yeah, we can. Great. Yeah, we can see that the uh, the loss to Tompkins really impacted things. Not only, I mean, obviously, uh, weren't able to come out with the with the district championship because of that. Uh, but you went D two, which for a, a big name school like Katie, kind of came out of nowhere to a lot of people. Like Robert was really surprised. Uh, so what was that like? You know, just assuming you guys are going to be uh, one of the biggest names in six A uh, was was. What was the morale in the locker room then, uh, knowing you'd be facing some different teams than you thought you would be? Um, we were just motivated. We were ready to beat whoever came in front of us, and we just we just wanted our ring. And yeah, you got it. Yeah, you're wearing the shirt right now, and and uh, I love that. That's you know, uh, just another one for Katie. So many in in the last couple decades, right here. Well, it seems like every single year y'all are strong in every position defense, offense, and y'all never seem to miss it, uh, to, to skip a beat. Or like, y'all, y'all are always on rhythm, and everything seems perfect. What, describe to us, like, the dynamic in the KD uh, football program and the commitment that everyone puts in and, like, and just kind of the feeling there that everyone needs to be on the same page from the first day of, like, summer camp to however far y'all make it in the playoffs. Yeah, it's big. Being a unit is very important to us. We, like, we're, we, we're, everyone's held accountable. Everyone's got 615 weight room or film. And then if you have weight room, you got film after that. And then, and then fifth period, we do our football stuff. And then we got film after that. And then after school, we have fo- our football practice. And, and at, at SAC, we just, that's when we truly come together. We are all working out. We're, pushing people to just keep going no matter how sore you are or tired you are. And yeah, we just, we stay together. That's, that's something big at Katie, our unity. Yeah. You guys have a lot of, a lot of studs on the team. A couple guys left, you know, last year graduating probably in the, in the next couple of weeks uh, right now, but who are some of the guys on your team coming into this year that you think are going to make the biggest impact, you know, apart from you? Uh, Nick is going to make a huge impact. Throwing to him is such an honor, and it's great. He's so talented. I have Seth. He's uh, he's he's a great. He's a, he's such a good running back. He's fast, good moves. He he breaks so many tackles. He's so shifty. And on the defensive side, Malik will be big for us. I think Hammy, Arian, are two DBs. Antonio is a DB now. I'm I'm I have big hopes for him. And then obviously Bobby, I'm excited to see him again. And then Malik, everybody basically, every single person on our team, I just have so much confidence in them. And I feel like they're good. They're great. Yeah. Malik and Bobby are probably, uh, Bobby Taylor, you know, two of the biggest names on that team. Uh, but as the quarterback, a lot of people think that, you know, you would be uh, a highly recruited guy. You led a team to a state championship, yet that hasn't been the case. So what do you think people aren't seeing right now uh, in the recruiting process? Probably my height and weight and strength. And yeah, I'm, I'm small right now. I'd love to get bigger. My dad's six, four. So hopefully I can get to like six, two. I'd love to be there. That, that helped me a lot. I'd like to be faster. I definitely need that. I'm, I'm working on that. Well, you also got a lot of talent too. That uh, you just, but like, what are your strengths though? What, what are, what can you brag about? I know there's lots of things on that list too. Um, I feel like I'm a great leader, and for my team, I feel like I can, I help, I can help bring everybody together. I, I feel like I'm, I'm confident throwing the ball. I, I have complete faith in myself that I can make any throw I need to throw and and I can I can check my plays. I know defenses, I know my schemes, I know yeah, I know all that. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, stuff like that, you know, they call them the immeasurables and obviously the leadership and 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 things like that are are really important and and take over uh what recruiters are looking for and and size and speed and stuff like that. Uh, so you're hitting up a lot of the camps right now. I saw you at Elite 11 a couple months ago. 
what what is this whole process going to be like in the next couple months leading up to the season? Uh, it'll be a lot of traveling and working hard. I'll, I'll be in the weight room a lot. I'll be I'll be playing baseball too. Uh, but I'll be in the weight room. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to some camps and just try and get my name out there. Well, what are you gonna like as as all this picks up? Like you said, like you're gonna be traveling a lot, but that that usually a lot of a lot of quarterbacks and, and just recruit like recruits in general, their commitment kind of starts to pick up around the time you're about to head into. What are you really like most excited about or just uh, preparing for? I'm just excited. I'm excited to play again. I'm I'm ready to play another season. I miss football. It was such a fun time, being so close to all my teammates. That that's that's what I'm excited for. But yeah. So I think we'll wrap it up with this one. Uh, a question that we ask a lot of guys, and I think I know what the answer is, like always. But what is the goal for this season? State championship. And that's district at first. That's our our first is district, but our end goal state. We want to state again. We want to make it ten. Well, uh, I I actually have one last question too. But we kind of ask this one all the time. But and I think you've kind of mentioned it throughout this podcast, kind of uh, indirectly multiple times. But what is the what is one thing? We always ask this to our guests. What is one thing about you, whether it be a, as a leader, as a person, as a football player, that recruiters and coaches don't know about yet, but that you would like them to know? I think I think I'm smart. I'm, I'm smart in the I'm smart in classes. I'm smart on the field. I'm smart like bringing people together. I'm like I know how to. I know how to bring it. I know how to bring us together. And I, I feel like I'm a good leader. I can, yeah, I can. That, well, that's what you hope for. That's what you hope for. Yes. Yeah. There you have it. Caleb Coger, a very smart guy. Uh, his brains got him all the way to a state championship last year. He's looking to go back to back this season. Caleb, we appreciate having you on. Thanks for coming Thanks. on. It was an honor. And now we have our next guest on the episode, Jalen Gilbo, defensive back from Port Arthur Memorial High School. He's committed to UT. I can't wait to have him on Hook'em Horns. Jalen, how you doing? I'm doing good. How y'all doing today? Doing hey, man, we're happy to have you on. Oh, yeah, no doubt. It's all love. Yeah, and I was telling Will earlier, like, Will, how excited have I been to bring Jalen on? And we filmed our episode last week. Um, a little bit before this, and, and, and Robert was just so excited to have you on, man, and, and you're one of the biggest guests that we've had on, and, and boy, you've had a great last couple months, and I know Robert and I are going to hit on that a little bit later on. Well, yeah, so you're, you're a four-star defensive back uh, on 24-7 and Rivals, and you're the 19th ranked cornerback in the nation for your grade level, and you committed to UT on September 19th, 2020, but Taking a step back and looking at your recruitment, you received your first offer, or your first official offer, your sophomore year from Arkansas, if I'm not mistaken. No, nah, it was um, it was A and M, Texas A and M. Okay, yeah, even cooler. Uh, uh, but uh, so February of your soft February of 2020, it was kind of your big time month in terms of getting all these offers because you you had Texas on February 1st, Kansas. Right. With USC than Bama, Can right? You describe that time for me and is how exciting that was for you. Oh shoot, man! It was like a blessing, man, because you know everybody can't get that opportunity. So you know I try to take every opportunity when I get on the field and just go hard every play, because you know you never know what like the next thing can happen to you. So you know you might not want to take the the playoff because at the end of the day, this 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 my recruitment and stuff. So like when that stuff happened. When Alabama offered me, when a and offered me, I'm like, shoot, dang. Because at first, I wasn't like a football player. I used to play basketball and run track. So, like, that's a it's a big blessing to me. You know, I'm just trying to feed my family, you know, and RP to my grandma. So, that's pretty much it. You know, I was happy when I first got them offers. Yeah, first offer being Texas A&M, uh, that's pretty incredible. 
and we see a lot of guys rack up uh, maybe some some smaller schools, some D2, D3 offers. Did that kind of catch you by surprise, getting an offer that big to start off? Yo, by my first offer, I ain't know it was going to be AM, honestly. You know, I thought I was going to start off with, like, you know what I'm saying, a D2, but I know my ability, though. So, like, when AM offered me, I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go. It's time to roll now. <laughs> and that shoot, that just, it just motivated me. So now, every time, like, I get an offer, it's just like, go hard, Jalen. So that's pretty much it about that. Well, what about the University of Texas kind of attracted you the most? You still have a year left of your high school career, and you've already made your commitment, which is awesome. Uh, it, you had many great places to choose from. What about the 40 acres or Austin, uh, UT, um, just drew your attention more? Oh, uh, sure. UT, I like, I like their facility, you know. It's, it, they, even though they got the little, you know, they're building the, um, the new stadium and stuff like that, I like their coaching staff. You know, even though Coach Tom Herman and them left, the new coaching staff came in, and now they're taking care of business. And, sure, I just want to build a relationship with the new coaching staff, and that's what we're doing right now. And, uh, sure. And it's in Austin, so like Austin, like one of these, one of the biggest, biggest out right now. You could do like do whatever, do like what you want. So shoot, I just, I just like Austin, and yeah, we, coaching staff and Coach Joseph. You know, me and him got a good relationship. So you know, in order to have like to be good, a great player, you got to have that bond with that coach and make sure that coach is coaching you hard. Yeah, you already kind of started to talk about. Uh... One of the coaches that that has kind of you know influenced you to to become a Longhorn, uh, mm-hmm. you know, give me a few names of the guys that really recruited you hard, and and what the transition was like uh, from the Tom Herman staff to to now what uh, Steve Sarkeesian is doing. Well, sure. When when it was Coach Tom Herman, it was Coach Jay Bala. So when he was there, he was just like, "Hey, Gilbo, you know, like we want you stuff like that. You know how them coaches be." So like, sure, and I'm like just peeping it out and me and him had a great relationship. Like that was, he was a, he was a great coach. Like I like the way he coached up his DBs. He just wasn't like just half doing everything. It was like full rep, full speed every time. So like, and I like that about a coach. I need a coach that's going to be on me and like coach me hard every single play. Cause I want to take my game to the next level. Well, have you uh, developed a strong relationship with the new defensive coordinator from Washington, Pete Qu- uh, Qu- Qu- Kwiatkowski? We talk, but, like, we don't talk, like, you know what I'm saying, like, everyday type. But every, every now and then, like, when I get on the phone, Coach Joseph, he might walk in and we might talk it up. But but my I'll talk to my position coach a lot, and that's Coach Joseph. And I talk to Coach Sarkeesian a lot, too. He texts me all every now and then, checking up on me, see how I'm doing. What's your uh, schedule looking like for official visits? Because there was the dead period forever, pretty much since, you know, March of, of 2020. Uh, are you planning on visiting anywhere else other than other than UT? Oh, uh, you know, shoot, I want to just take all my take all my five. You know, I will probably go to Texas, A and M, uh, TCU, Bama, and LSU. That's awesome. And so it's just talking about your your off season, getting these visits in. Let's take a step, like one year later after your senior season, because you're a junior right now. But right. Are you going to plan on, uh, hope like, UT, like, enrolling early? Because that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm already enrolling early. I enrolled in uh, December. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. You get, you're really so getting a head gotta, start there. Yeah, that's that's my plan, you know. Roll in in December, take care of that, do three years, and take it to the next level. Three years. I mean, I, I really like that mentality, man. That's a lot of – we hear a lot of guys say that, but – I think, you know, with you, I think that's probably attainable. And you're, you're coming from a small town in Texas. Did right. you always want to be a Longhorn? I know UT has always had uh, their fair share of the top Texas recruits because they know a lot of kids want to be a Texas right. Longhorn from the time they were born. Was that the case with you? Nah, that wasn't even my favorite college. You know, I wanted to go to college for track, really, and sure. Like my ninth grade year and my eighth grade year, that's when I started training with Ro. And we started, he like, nah, we don't this football. Then he started training me as a receiver at first. And then all of a sudden that just changed. And then I would turn into a DB. And so now like I'm just working on my craft. I wanted to go to LSU at first. Hmm. That was my dream school. But now nah, shoot, everything, like I said, everything is different. You never know what the future holds. Yeah, let's talk a little bit uh, more about about Ro Rokane, who mm-hmm. is your coach for uh, Fast Seven v Seven. 
you guys are one of the top teams in the state, really in the region. Uh, what has that been like over the last few months developing a relationship with some of the guys on that team? Oh, it's a brotherhood over there. Like, you know, Ro, he's a great, great, great coach, mentor, everything. He's going to train you up, make sure everything is done by step by step. Like, you know, he don't want to just see you, like, coming out there this wrong or just half doing what he's telling you to do. You know, he want everything full speed, everything done the correct way because everybody watching Fast 7v7. So, you know, so, like, we got to do everything right. And, like, if we don't shoot, that just, like, put a name out there for us. So when we step on the field, we're giving 100% as brothers. Well, I mean, so bringing up what uh, – you're on a great 7v7 team, and I'm sure, like, where it's based, it, it can be a far drive from Port Arthur, right? Right. So coming from a small town like Port Arthur, and now you're going to, like, one of the most, like, iconic uh, schools for football. And what, what's it like coming from a small town and then, like, you're basically – you're following in Jamal Charles's footsteps. He went to your high school – do you, right. Do you have a connection with him at all? No, nah, we don't really talk like that. You know, every now, every time, like I will see him, like out. If he come back to come back home, like we'll talk, but we don't talk like that though. All right, cool. You guys had a really uh, a great season last year. Uh, unfortunately, didn't end up so well in the playoffs. So, what's the mindset coming into this season? Uh, in five A, you know, some people would say there's not as much competition. What would you say to that? And and like I said, what's the mindset going in? Right. And shoot, and the mindset is that shoot, like we we was this the champs last year. We're trying to be better than this champs, trying to get past the first round. You know, we lost to um high tower last year, and then the year before last, we lost to uh I think it was Foster or somebody. One it was one of them teams we lost. No, it was Shadow Creek we lost to last year. And then that last year before that, three years ago, we lost to Foster. <laughs> So now, like, sure, I'm just trying to overcome that. You know, I'm, you know, it hurt to lose in the first round because you got this far and you're losing in the first round. So now we just hard working, dedication. It's, a, it's just a mind thing, you know. When stuff get hard, you know, you got to over, overcome that. So now I'm just talking to our teammates. You know, every time we step on the field, we got to do everything 100% because how you do this on the field is how you're going to do it when you're in the game. So, like, we just got to take, take advantage. Would you say that for this coming season, more pieces are falling into place than uh, what y'all had last season? Right. So a lot of pieces, like a lot of us coming back from the last year team. And the last year team was great. So putting the last couple couple of players from last year team onto this new team is going to be a good a good program. So, like, I'm hoping everything goes playing out well. It's my senior year, you know. So, shoot, I'm trying to dominate and go out, and go out with a bang. Yeah, would you mind talking about some of these – these pieces that you're alluding to, you know, specific players on your team? Oh, shoot. I'm coming back. My sophomore corner coming back. He's going to be a junior. The quarterback coming back. He's going to be a senior. Uh, my DN, our D tackle, our safety, our two linebackers. Uh, uh, one of them going to be a senior. One of them going to be a, a junior. Uh, on a receiver, we got a slot coming back, an outside, and another outside coming back. So, we, it's, it's a lot of pieces that's still going to be there. Our O lineman, dang that half our O lineman coming back. So we should be great this year. Is there a specific part of your game that you're working on this offseason? Like whether it's technique or maybe it's footwork. Is there something that you, you're trying to get like improve at? I'm trying to improve at everything I can because you know, stuff might change when you get to UT. So I'm just trying to work on everything that I can work on now. But the main thing that I'm working on now is my press technique and moving my feet and my hips. Yeah, it sounds like you're really staying focused, and I think we're going to wrap up here in a minute. But I love your energy, and I've, I've really loved talking to you. So what's one thing that you want people to know about you? Sure, that I'm coming to UT, and I'm going out with a bang, and I'm going to work hard every day, every time I step on the field. Well, there you have it. Will Turboff and I interviewing 2022 defensive back Jalen Gil Gilbo committed to the University of Texas. Hook him horns. Jalen, thanks for coming on today. Oh, no, it's all good. Appreciate it. Much love. All right. Well, once again, we want to thank Caleb and Jalen for coming on this week to the Vipu podcast. We're excited to see them play this year. Caleb's got two more years, and Jalen will be in Austin in a couple of years where Robert will see him. Uh, but let's go ahead and take it into track. We had the UIL state meet. 
uh, this last weekend. Uh, Robert's our expert on track, so go ahead and get us kicked off on that. Yeah, we'll be talking about 6A today. Uh, Summer Creek, Strath and Dad, they had a great weekend. They claimed their first ever 6A state title. When they scored a total of 54 points. Just to have a lot of people on your track team qualify for state and then to excel really well and score a lot of points, that's very impressive and just shows how, how uh, well the coaching is down there. They had some key top performances that – Really won them, won them the meet. Darius Rainey got second in the 800 meters by a time of a minute and 52 seconds. Just to break two minutes in that wow. race is really hard. Uh, Barry, Barry, Barry Richards won the gold medal in the 110 meter hurdles by a time of 13.31 seconds. Will, do you want to talk about a little bit about their field event guys too? Yeah, Jalen Rivers is a guy. Uh, he got first in high jump. I know there were a lot of uh, great athletes in that one. The Barry Richards clip. And the hurdles and the Jalen Rivers clip both went viral. Uh, Summer Creek had such a, a great weekend there in Austin. Uh, and Kevin Grubbs got first place in dish in discus, excuse me, uh, 207 and one inch. So really incredible weekend, like I said, from Summer Creek. And their four by four meter relay team got second place. And Robert, I think there's someone on the relay team from the first place team that you'd like to talk about. Yeah, so right behind, uh, right behind them was Summer Creek, but the first place team in the four by four was College Park, and you know who's on that team? Our guy Marcus Scott the second, who we interviewed two just a couple of weeks ago, but he's going to play football at LSU. Meanwhile, the whole team itself they got second at the entire meet, but the four by four team they won, and they won big by a whole two seconds. Usually these races come down to the wire, and they're like by less than a second, maybe like by one second. They won by a full two seconds. They ran a time of three minutes and 13 seconds. Yeah, the four by four is always uh, one of the most exciting events uh, in the entire meet. Uh, but uh, one of the most exciting athletes that we saw, he is just a man child. Robert, you've got your own nickname for him. It's Bryce Foster. First place in the shot put. Go ahead and give me a, a little bit more detail on that one. Well, uh, I think everyone's been calling him that nickname. It's the Mountain Man, but uh, yeah, he claimed this. Yeah, like you said, he threw seventy-one feet in one inch. I think he absolutely dominated the competition and beat the second place out by quite a lot. Yeah, he looked really, really great out there. A clip that a lot of people have seen uh, from this meet. It, it's gone viral, like the Summer Creek ones did. Is the hundred meter dash. Because there were times in this meet, there was a professional track event on uh, a couple days later, and the times in the Texas high school meet were faster than they were in a professional event. Robert, wow. talk a little bit about that. Crazy. Yeah, so in the 100-meter dash, it's quite a show. Jose Garcia of Harlingen High, we don't really talk about them that much. I don't know if we have mentioned him on this podcast before, but he got first place, but barely, barely. Right behind them was, right behind him was Connor Washington of College Park. They actually both like on mile split in uh, one of the one of the uh, just they, they love to cover high school track and just track events in general. But it says they both ran, ran a ten point oh oh flat. But Garcia was actually the one who crossed the finish line first, and that but that's how how close the race was. Yeah, ten. Oh, oh, flat. That is insane. We saw the Matthew Bowling one, which because of the wind now on this one, again, uh, people are saying it's not official, but still there are so many great track athletes here in the state of Texas. And I know there was a show put on by DeSoto for girls. Yeah. So DeSoto, they claimed the girls 6A state title. They got first in the four by two. But, like, that's the middle relay event. That's still great. First in the 4 by 2 In the 4 by one they got third. And in the 4 by 4 they got second. But so they, they had some top individual performances. Uh, Jalazia, Jalazia Smith, who got first in the 110 hurdles. She also got second in the 300 hurdles. Logan Neely, she got fourth in the 300-meter hurdles. And then Ja'Ara Griffin got fifth in the 100 and then eighth in the 200. In total, they scored – a crazier amount of points than uh still crazy that Summer Creek scored 54, but 
DeSoto, they scored 74. So yeah, lot. 74 is a whole lot. Like I said, it, it was just an amazing weekend uh, for high school track and field. So we want to give a, a big congratulations to DeSoto, to Summer Creek, you know, individual performers uh, like Bryce Foster and Jose Garcia. A lot of amazing athletes here in the state of Texas. We're happy to see them all. We're happy to see guys like Caleb Coger and Jalen Gilbo on our show. And I think that'll just about do it. A, a, a huge weekend of baseball, and we'll be back as we come down to the last few rounds of that and, and wrap up our season here. Yeah, uh, just great to be back on and, and record another episode. We'll see you guys next week. See ya.